Hello everyone, welcome to uh, episode 16. Uh, today we will talk about uh, selecting the right journal for your uh, paper, for your study. Prof, uh, what would you say us, how we can select the journals correctly? What are the tips that we need to pay attention? I mean, Arif, I think uh, selecting a journal is very, very important because uh, if you select the wrong journal, sometimes your paper says six months before they come back to you and tell you, oh, this is a problem with this journal. It happened with me before. Now, even the situation is better because they can directly contact you with email. Before they use even, you have to send it by post and then wait for the post and sometimes it takes one year for the review process. So if I'm going to select a journal, I would look for these factors. First of all, the whatever I'm writing should lie within the scope of the journal. Because you can prepare an article and it's irrelevant. Like for example, there are articles on nano uh, or whatever the nano medicine, and then you, you, you present your a paper which is irrelevant, of course, the, the editor will directly reject it. And this is why the editor is like a, a gate okay. to stop uh, these things. And the so try to find the scope where fits your journal. This is even more relevant for people who are in their early career. Because once you get more specialized, you get the experience and you know which journals you should uh, send to. For example, if there is a paper on road traffic collisions, that would fit into, let's say, uh, injury, that would fit into journal of trauma, that would fit into, into accident analysis prevention, that would fit into road traffic collision injury. It's an epidemiological study on prevention. But if you get a clinical study with the management of just a tube to accident analysis prevention, they will not take it. So, what is the scope of my of the journal I'm going through? The second thing which is important is what am I writing? Because uh, writing uh, uh, a review, we call there are two types of reviews: a narrative review, which is like collecting data without a system, and the systematic review where there is a protocol. Many journals don't publish narrative reviews. So you, you, you start preparing the narrative review with all these hundred references in, in the way the journal wants, and then you find, oh, there's no narrative review. They don't accept, accept that. So also, what you submit, not only in the scope, but also fits to the policy of the journal. So you have to read the instructions very well. Some journals don't publish case reports. So how, how can you prepare a case report if you know that this journal does not yeah. prepare case reports. The other uh, two important factors which are now needs experience to decide where to submit is exactly what do I need from this article. And especially I have a lot of staff who are really helping in the promotion. You're, to, to, you're, you're saying this be, uh, for the, you know, you know open access ones and or the registered no, no, journal not, not, or not I'll speak about yeah. open access uh, let's say you have a, a person who's really working hard to be promoted and there is one paper left for him that should be accepted in the last six months yeah. it's the duty of the senior person to decide exactly which is the best journal that can be accepted within this period of time because targeting so high, I have some experience of a paper being going down on two journals because I was keen for a study to be published and it was published in lower rank, it took two years. So if I want my communication to be contacted or published, refereed because the, 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 the journals are refereed, that means your peers will tell you this is good or bad. Because you can't publish on the midline, on the internet. Now uh, there is a lot of what we call pre-publication. You, your article is on the web, but it's not refereed. It should be refereed. You need the opinion of your colleagues. So what is the objective or what do I need from the manuscript 
does it serve another reason? Because we, I, we have discussed why do we publish. Of course, the main reason is we want to, to carry knowledge for others. But of course, there are other reasons. Someone is doing this work because he needs to be promoted. So you try to fit that by picking the best journal that does that job and not less than that. Of course, if I'm really looking for a study that I'm doing, sometimes I wait for two years. I don't mind because I want it to be in the best journal. The third factor which is important, not acceptance, because for promotion you need acceptance, is the time of publication. And of course, now with the, with the open access, with the internet, it's great that sometimes you get your paper in two, three days. But some journals get delayed for six months, even now. Some get delayed one year. Now with the preprint approach on the web, this is easier. Why? Because they give what's called DOI. So there is an identifier for you, digital identifier. So whatever is written is protected legally. No one can take it and say, this is, this is my work. Now, the other factor which is very important is to know whether your journal is complete open access or is it uh, hard copy? Because still many of the associations have hard copies and have specific number of, of issues like are there four issues a year? Are there four 12 issues a year? Are there six issues a year? The more issues you have, the more probability of acceptance rate that you have. Yeah. And then, of course, an article with uh, 12 time, a journal with 12 time publications have, but needs more articles. Definitely. The other important factor is the, the open access. Open access has two, two types because the fees can be either carried by the publisher, whoever can be an association, yeah. and they pay for that, like the African uh, Health Sciences, it's an African journal, open access, and the association or the, the university pays for it. So you don't have any financial uh, require, I mean requirement. But some open access journals, like all uh, BioCentral, you pay a good amount of money, I mean, it's, it's really a good amount of money, 3000 3, sometimes dollars. You should ask yourself, do I have the money? Do I have the grant? Does my uh, institute will pay it for me? And this is one, one of the sad things many of the poor countries, of course they can exempt you, but if you, if you are living in, a, in a, a rich country and you don't have funding, you are disprivileged that you cannot publish your, your publication in open access, by the way, and you have to find funds for it. So the other important factor we say it's called impact factor. And what is an impact factor? Impact factor actually, they look to the number of articles published in the last, uh, I mean, two years and the citation, their citation, and they divide them. And if you say it's an impact factor of six, this means an average citation of each article is six in the last two years. And uh, I mean, I personally, and I've written on that, impact factor is important if you really it's related to your promotion, you put an impact factor. But what I think is more important is the value to your community. Uh, the real impact of an article is how much did it help your community? Because the impact factor depends on the number of readers. If you have a very narrow speciality, it's a, a very narrow speciality. The people who read it will be less, so the impact factor will be less. But that does not mean that this article for that field is important. So also you look for the impact factor, because sometimes in some universities I work on, if the impact factor is more than two, even in our university, at least you have an impact factor above uh, two, uh, you, may, you have a good chance that the university will support you. The other thing now which is coming, uh, important and I ask people to look into it is the ranking. There are uh, different ways of ranking and th this doesn't depend only on the impact factor. It depends on the each factor and the each factor what does it mean? It's easy. If you say your each factor is 10 this means that you have 10 articles cited more than 10 times. If your each factor is 8 you have 8 fa papers published more uh, cited more than 8 times and they depend on the number of articles and they take a, take a rank and from this rank you can say this is and they usually divide the articles into four quartiles 
we call it Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, whatever number of disorders in this, in, uh, in this area. Let's say you have medicine, surgery, emergency medicine, ophthalmology. They divide these articles which are classified, uh, these journals which are classified in these articles into four Qs. And of course, if you are in Q1, this is the top, Q2, Q3, Q4. So, my advice is really try to target the proper level and even go higher up a little. You will be surprised sometimes I good paper which are rejected and they were accepted in higher level. So try to, be, to go higher, but don't over be uh, superstitious. Like for example, I want to publish a New England Journal of Medicine, or I want, but you know, you, you just, the, the nice thing about these good journals is that the editors are very hard workers and they will reply to you within a week or two weeks. So if you know that the editor, they will give you a quick response whether they will send it for review or not by screening, then okay. It's okay to try two weeks or one month, but not more than that. So try to get it to the proper level and then even higher a little just to test how it was. Now the, last, the other thing which I really use with my, uh, with everyone works with me and I maybe close, is I assume that my paper will be rejected seven times. And then I prepare the list. And I have a strategy. I work hard on my paper, especially in the methodology, that I really don't teach, change a lot because I know that the comments will be mainly in the introduction discussion from the reviewers, not on the methodology. And then I tell my, we do the hard work before we submit. And then we don't change a lot, by the way. I ask the, the if the journal is interested in my revision in the article, I would do tough revision, sometimes three months, sometimes two months. But if you are sure of your, of your methods and analysis, your paper is perfect. And I will discuss this how to critique a paper. Because even there was at one time a movement that the paper is actually is exactly like you present an abstract. It's really detailed methods and results. And the discussion is an opinion. And I will describe this also in detail in critique. And yeah. how to write a paper. We have another session for this. Yeah, case. we have another session and I will go in detail in that. But I, I really, uh, I think, it, I make the list of seven. We make a plan. And if we make a plan, we follow it. And at the end, it's easy for everyone. It's very clear plan, not only for acceptance, but also for rejection. So you make a plan for your journals, selecting your journals, Hoping one of them would be accepted, and usually it works. Uh, I have one question, Prof. Uh, of course, uh, uh, <coughs> what, what you highlight is are very important, but on the other hand, um, uh, uh, you writing your paper, uh, ideally, you know, selecting the journal and start writing your paper for them. But the, in reality, actually, we are writing the paper, and then we are, you know searching for the you know right journal uh, I mean or vice versa but uh, do you have any any magic cutoffs for example for the abstracts can fit almost the majority of the journals number of words for example do you have any magic numbers about you know tables figures can fit majority of the journals because if you write the paper five tables five figures and you want to actually submit the, uh, the journal to one uh, article to one journal and yeah. it's accept maximum three table three figures so you have to actually redo it you know the many things again yeah I, i'll go into that in detail but i target usually three figures two figures and five tables maximum not one five tables maximum i like three two if they can do the message I don't go more than five. Occasionally, I go to six, but five and simple figure. I, if there is a complex table, like let's say, I mean, uh, I'm looking into uh, subgroups or something uh, like death mm -hmm. of uh, two variables, uh, like uh, those who died in RTC, those who didn't die. I would like to put the demography on one and then the severity of markers in another. But we will go in detail. I have within writing a paper, because I will describe that more right. detail. How, what's my approach in doing that? But now we are just selecting the journal. Of course, sometimes the journal selects you. And that's another issue, because 
Don't go to any of these journals. They come every day to you and they just want money. If you want to submit your article, this is my advice. Never submit unless it's a well-recognized journal to you. Yeah. So don't submit for anyone just to get it published. That's the worst scenario you will be in. Uh, other thing, they have to be indexed, of course. Of course, they have to be indexed. Uh, when I spoke about impact factor, and uh, there are different index uh, bars like PubMed, uh, EMBAs, uh, you have the uh, uh, Scopus. So there are, yeah. of course, they have to be indexed. I, I mean, yeah. the, I never, in the last uh, maybe 30, 40 years, I never published in a journal unless uh, maybe if it's invited, I would think about it, if it's a new journal to support that art journal. But never, because what's it? I have published excellent papers, by the way, Arif. In non-index journal, no one cited them. Yeah. Uh, my PhD was in a very unique drug called Lexipathant, yeah. and I spent extensive time on, uh, on writing the pharmacology of that uh, drug and uh, by invitation I gave it to another journal and this has never been cited by the way That's so uh, because yeah. also citation gives you an indication that how much researchers are using your work so of course impact factor reflects the citation yeah. and of course it's basic for me I mean it should be it should be in the midline it should be in the PubMed it should be people have to access it it's better to have open access uh, and this is very important. The advantage of open access, poor countries can access your article and they can be cited more. Yeah. I have the experience of uh, excellent reviews. One of them, Biomechanism uh, of Royal Traffic Collagens in the Singapore Medical Journal, beautifully written uh, review article. Believe me, highly cited. Another one, so uh, on uh, the effect of seat belts of Royal Traffic Collagens, highly cited. So open access has great advantages. A quick publication, uh, global approach, high citation, you help the poor countries, they can read your article. So it is, I believe open access is a good, but the only thing is the expenses. Hopefully it will go down. Yeah. Thank you very much, Prof, uh, for this episode. Thank you. Thank you.